Ooh, that was kind of nice. Welcome everyone, this is Dom, and this is another episode of Kerbal Realism. Last episode, we were successful in manually rendezvousing with Goosley out in orbit around Kerbin and brought him home safely. And since then, I have done one or two little puddle uh, jumper missions, so this rocket right here. Uh, with Jeb, of course. I should have actually used Goosley, so he got, a, got his pilot rating up, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so I have enough science to spend some science today. So first, we're going to look at this node right here. Uh, this is the first one I'm going to be getting today, mostly because it has batteries, and uh, that's really going to help us out in the very near future. Also, it has a bunch of science-y things, and the best antenna at the beginning of the game for you. Uh, this guy right here, it basically allows any drones or any communication uh, between you and Minmus, uh, so that distance specifically. So that's probably the best thing to start with if you're using remote tech like I am. Uh, so what I want to do is get this node. It's going to cost 40,000 monies to unlock everything, so we're not going to do that just yet. And then I also want to get this node right here, so the uh, flight control node. Uh, that's going to allow us to get the uh, first drone, so the Staputnik. Um, and then also a bunch of other control parts and some fairing things. I actually included procedural fairings this time around as well as the KW versions. Uh, and also it brings a lot of stabilizers and uh, such like that, so reaction wheels and stabilizers and things. That'll help us uh, basically getting future things into orbit. So we're going to go ahead and research that. So combined between the two, it's going to be 80 grand uh, basically to get both sets of these uh, unlocked. So what I got to do is figure out what are the best things that I want to get uh, in this specific purchase, and then we will come back, we will have a new mission, uh, and I'll probably even have a rocket ready to go. So I'll see you then. And welcome to the launch pad with a vehicle that looks very similar to ones we have launched before. Uh, we have Jeb in the hot seat, and this rocket is basically just a science module with Jeb to take it up. Uh, we have a couple of separatrons at the top. Uh, that's for a later part. And uh, basically, we have two contracts, because that's all we can have at this point. We have two contracts. That is to recover scientific data from orbit around uh, Kerbin, or from space around Cor Kerbin. And we have test separatron ones orbiting Kerbin at a very specific uh, height. Uh, so we need to get to about 84 kilometers up uh, before we can basically satisfy this contract. So we're just going to go ahead and launch this guy in 3, 2, 1, go. So uh, we have a bunch of new parts that we just unlocked. Um, I went ahead and bought just the parts that I wanted. So for example, these reaction wheels, they're the, the ones that are built for uh, aircraft. Uh, they're relatively light and they don't have the same torque that the ones for the rockets do. Uh, we have the winglets that I bought, and I also bought the Science Junior here. Uh, all three of which are very important for this mission. I love having the winglets on the rockets, and I love having reaction wheels, just because I don't ever have to fight with the rocket on the way up then. Uh, it really, really helps for all this kind of stuff. Now we're just going to try to put ourselves in uh, a normal little, a normal equatorial orbit orbit here. It doesn't really matter uh, what we end up doing. The only thing is that matters is if we get to that height and we take, take our science data uh, from that height. Or from outside of Kerbin's atmosphere. So, uh, what we need to do a lot in this series, specifically this one, is uh, we need to do a lot more of these kind of contracts. So I need to find a couple contracts and complete both of them probably per one per mission. Um, having a lot of these mods installed is quite difficult to be able to do that. So Ferrum Aerospace, uh, Deadly Reentry, all that kind of stuff makes it a lot more difficult to uh, basically do all these missions. Uh, remote Tech is probably the biggest uh, conspirator against me in that specific point because we really can't send uh, 
probes out unless we have communications. So that's going to be a big issue and a big money spender later on in the series, of course, uh, in the season. Last season, we basically got to the point where we had our communications array up, and we are going to try to get there as soon as we can. But I do have a feeling it's going to take a little bit more time uh, because we have to uh, upgrade the base now uh, with all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be an interesting fact uh, or an interesting thing to do is to upgrading is getting all those upgrades done for Kerbal Space Center. Uh, that's going to be very expensive, but very worth it, tru truthfully, uh, to have all of the upgrades ready to go. I'm trying to get to about 45 degrees here. Not entirely amazing at ascent. Uh, I don't really know what the best profile is, etc., etc. Ooh, look, the stars came out. Um, <laughs> so let's go ahead. Let's go throttle down, decouple, throttle up slowly. There we go. Um, See, so yeah, I don't really know what the best profile is or those kind of launch profile or anything, but who cares? Uh, it usually works for me. So I need to get my Apple apps. If you guys are watching in lower uh, quality than 1080p, I do apologize. You probably can't see this, but we're at 65 kilometers right now. Uh, okay. We are tipping over. We're just trying to basically round out a nice orbit around uh, 84 to 86 kilometers just so we can use our separatrons while in an orbit at that height. What I could do is activate separatrons in uh, an elliptical orbit, but I do, don't really mind spending a little bit more fuel getting ourselves uh, situated in a nice round uh, orbit. It's not that bad, so I'm just going to keep on burning towards the horizon now. Might as well at this point. Uh, it'll slowly raise our apple apps, but also quite fast bring ourselves uh bring our peri apps up so i just just need to keep an eye on some of these numbers is basically what i'm doing uh so the next thing we really really need to worry about is the launch pad the launch pad itself is not going to be sufficient for supporting any of our new vehicles so for example when we go to the moon which will be very very soon uh it won't be able to support the weight of that vehicle also the next thing uh, after that should probably be the vehicle assembly building uh, that we need to upgrade. The very, very important, it's very, very important to get that done, uh, mostly because we need larger part counts and heavier vehicles in the future. So we're just about at the right height here. So I'm going to cut off the engine now. Uh, we'll wait a few seconds to get our periaps, oh, sorry, uh, get closer to the apple apps here. Uh, we have plenty of fuel. We have a minute, 13 seconds. Uh, actually a thousand meters per second of fuel left just in this guy right here. Uh, that's I figured out that this is a pretty decent way of launching light vehicles like this. Having a decent amount of fuel in a second stage really helps me out. I think I might be doing this more often. Uh, I did a couple tests and I haven't really watched. I don't really watch very many YouTubers. Uh, but what I tend to do is uh, base my designs off of real things. So, for example, uh, me doing this was based off of the last uh, Delta 2, I think, launch, or Delta 5 launch uh, by the United Launch Alliance. They have uh, their secondary engine has a decent amount of fuel in it, but it's usually within the fairing of their payload. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that always works, but or how they always do it. I really haven't done a lot of it, but the reason why I uh, know a little bit about that is because I live right down the road from uh, from the launch pads in Florida, so I get to see them from my front door, from my front uh, patio area. Um, if you guys follow me on Twitter, I'll probably be posting pictures if I ever get the chance to actually take pictures. I did once, and I uh, actually had to take down the picture because it was way too blurry. You couldn't even figure out what it was. This was because it was a night launch for that specific mission. Okay, let's get ourselves. There we go. Okay, now let's. It's our periaps apple apps is now above what we need uh, here. So we are going to take our science data before it gets dark. That's just for my benefit, of course. Uh, 22.5. The microgravity has greatly affected the growth of crystalline structures. Loose objects are also flying around the bay in a very messy, fascinating way. Uh, so that we will be able to recover, and that's 22 sites, and that's plenty. 
If we do a crew report, we are in space near Kerbin. Hmm. Uh, we'll probably do the crew report from the ground. We can't do an EVA report at all, so we need to test the Separatrons. Now, what I want to do is try to land in an area I haven't been to, so probably around here. So if we wait to burn right around this point in the dark, uh, we'll be able to bring down our periaps here, uh, and then I will do my Separatron burn thingy uh, at the same time, and then, so the science will land more or less close to Kerbal Space Center, but the uh, capsule should land way out here in this different biome. Hopefully we'll be able to just get a crew report and an EVA report from there. Okay, cool. So let's get ourselves to that point. Basically right where the periaps is right now. Or sorry, apoaps is. We will put ourselves in retrograde mode and he'll automatically point himself towards retrograde, which is really a nice benefit. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and slow down time now. He'll move himself over. Good. And I'm going to go ahead and just hit the gas. There we go. Okay, and now... Good. That's decent. Uh, we might be having an issue here. Oh, I'm not in orbit anymore. Hmm. So I think we're going to have to redo that. Uh, we have to bring our periaps back, or apoaps back up. That's not good. Oop. Uh, apparently I have to satisfy this while in orbit, so me having a lower uh, than ideal height, sorry, in other words, not in orbit, uh, it will not satisfy the contract here. So I'm in orbit now, I'm at the right height. Uh, if we move these guys down, and then hit if we go back to retrograde, I know I'm doing all this in the dark, but I wanted to get this done now. Oop. Am I still in orbit? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Darn it! I did it again! Good. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, cool. The sun's out. Yay! Just for us. Uh, we're going to hit the stage now, so I can get that... Contract. There we go. Contract complete. Uh, we had our main stage recovered, so we got uh, almost 9,000 monies back for our main stage there. That's really good for us. Uh, we need lots of monies for these. And we finished our contract, so we got 12,000 for that. It's awesome. And now we need to deorbit ourselves, and I want to do this soon, uh, as soon as I can here. So I'm going to deorbit basically from this point. And if I do this direction. I think I should budget over. I'm trying to get... There we go. That's good. Right about... There. That's good. Uh, the atmosphere should make us land on this continent here. So we are going to throw ourselves retrograde now. Hopefully whenever we deact... Or sorry. Uh, lose this bottom stage it will re-enter out of our view uh, so that it has its own physics it should be soon oh maybe not okay same basically the same principle as what we do every single time we do these and i've actually had a bunch of people tell me that i should orbit or sorry do uh what are they called i should do these burns or, uh, oops, do these re-entries on camera because they're fun, so I will. Um, they are fun, and the re-entry effects do look amazing. And we're doing this in the sun. A couple good reasons. Uh, there's debris, there's the other debris, and soon that will... Okay, cool, that's now out of physics range, I think, out of 2.5. Good, it's now out of physics range. Excellent, and now we are going to turn off T there, turn it back on a couple times, there we go, uh, just to get ourselves nice and situated. Jeb is now re-entering, look at the heat, look at the heat he's generating. <laughs> it is almost 650 degrees Celsius on the bottom of that craft right now, and we have slowed down enough to where we're not getting too hot anymore. 
Cool. Cool, we just recovered that bottom stage. Stage destroyed was the double decoupler system that I always use. And then we got a one piece of science and 28 uh, money, 28,000 monies for that. Also, I got, I think it said 22 science for uh, the actual yeah experiment itself. So we have 35 science waiting for us back at home. Ooh, wow, I think we're gonna land in the mountains. That's nice. Uh, 9,000 meters to go. Activate the parachute. Hopefully that will make it so we don't land on a surface that's too angled. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Slope, 22 degrees, 9 degrees, 8 degrees. Yeah, we'll see what happens whenever we slow down and go just about vertical. Uh, it'll tell us where we're landing and the slope of the train. Oof. We might be landing on quite a slope, though. <laughs> So it looks like we're going to be landing at about a 14 degree slope. Maybe less. Who knows? Yeah, it looks like we're landing right here. And the parachute should activate fairly soon. Oh, man. I don't like mountains. Mountains scare me. There we go. There goes the parachute. Uh, and of course, I wish I was landing over there, but no, I'm right on this edge of this uh, little uh, shelf here. Okay, we are going to land on a 19 degree slope, which isn't horrible. It's better than like 30, like these, some of these, 45, some of them. That would have been crazy to land on. <laughs> but I definitely am in like this mountainous biome, which is good for getting some more science while we're here. Just completed both of those contracts. Excellent, excellent. And a landing. And stay where you are. Good boy. Now we are going to do a crew report from here. Get 1.4 science from the Highlands. And we can't get a surface sample because I haven't unlocked that yet. Costs a lot of money to upgrade those buildings to be able to do this stuff. Uh, we'll get an EVA report. Uh, from the Highlands. Basically says, I don't need my parachute, my uh, super suit here, or my space suit. Super suit? Wow. Uh, here. And we will recover him. Excellent. Okay. Here he goes. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Uh, we have 39 signs waiting for us. We have got 900 funds back for that, so we have 200,000 funds. Excellent. No XP gained for Jeb. So I think what we'll do for the next flight, we will bring out Goosley uh, for the next flight. But until then, I'm going to figure out another strategy for next episode, and I will have to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.